The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Hello, Wolfpack! We're back! And this week, we return to the underrated horror web series, Crypt TV! But this time, everyone's favorite horror YouTube channel is taking their hit show straight to the hood! You know what that means! Time for my rap number! What, what, check it out! Stop it! Stop! 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 Pinky Dye, what the hell are you doing? Working on my sweet beats, Holmes! Uh, Pinky, I thought we agreed we weren't going to do any musicals on the show. But what about my rap career? It was dead when it began! Now, Pinky, please stop this foolishness at once. You're a doctor. Right now, I need you down at my laboratory to help with my research. No! What? But Pinky, you're a doctor, not a rap star. I need your help aiding my more important research. Are you seriously going to use our resources and precious time on this reviewing crap? Cat's our friend too! He needs our help more! To be fair, she is trying to help the new guy. Cat is still getting used to- SILENCE! <laughs> The new cat can manage things on his own. What I'm doing is more important. So, Pinky, I demand that you stop this absurdity at once and work for me now. No! You never help me with my sciency stuff, so I don't care to help you. Go away! Pinky! Shut up you! But... Shut up you! <laughs> What's with him? Oh, he's just on his period. Now, let's get back to my rapping! <gasps> um, actually, Pinky, I think the moment has passed. It's not going to, uh, flow well now, yo. Maybe next time. Oh, fiddlesticks! That stupid grumpy cat! I swear, I'll make him pay for everything! One day... One day! What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Carry on. Okay, then. Well, Wolfpack, Crypt TV wants to take their saga to the streets to show us the dark side of gang war. But what can be scarier than gang wars? Monsters drafted into gang wars. Yep, Crypt TV wants to have a haunted ghetto tale. But does this Tales from the Hood special achieve its badass street cred? Or is it just another poser who's all flash with no substance? Well, that's what we plan to find out. So be sure to know what side you stand on, because this nightmare is about to get hardcore. This is our wacky review on the Wild Side Crypt TV short film, Dread. So, our webisode opens up on some gang thugs killing a guy. <laughs> Starting us out on a happy note, huh, Crypt TV? We then meet our main villain, this smug evil cow who's the self-appointed mean queen bee of these streets. A lady obviously dubbed King. Yes, the lady queenpin of the hood is called King. King? Why is she called King instead of the more ideal title of Queen? 
so she can rebel against the patriarchy and all that junk. Cause she's a strong woman. <laughs> Whatever, King and her crew are, like all gang thugs, generic idiot bullies who love to pick on the weak and defenseless. We learn how she rose to power when she reveals that she has a magic talisman, which controls a demon from hell. A demon she summons to kill off the dying guy. Cross the dread, bleed the red. Wait, why did she need to summon a demon to finish this guy off? Her thugs were already killing him and had him bleeding dead already. Why did she need to release her demon boy? The world may never know. You're also probably wondering how this gang girl got her paws on a demon trinket. Well, isn't it obvious? eBay! Request permission to buy it now! We then meet our real main characters, two brothers named Jamie and Vic, who are carjacking their dead daddy's car back from the rival street gang who took it. You see, King had her off-screen demon boy kill their dad some time ago for not bowing down to them, and the brothers want to skip town to avoid their wrath. Short and simple enough to comprehend, so I can sympathize with them. It's here where they banter with each other, as the episode reveals its main theme, whether it's better to be respected by others, or feared by others. The big brother Jamie tells his little bro that they're carjacking the idiot bullies to get even with them, avenging their dead paw, but also to strike fear in them. Show them they mean bidness. However, the main brother, Vic, thinks violence only leads to more violence, believing that you're better if you're respected in life and treat others how you want to be treated. Admirable idealism, but sadly his brother's not having none of that Optimus Prime bullcrap and committing crime anyway. But then, they hear something strange going on nearby. So of course they have to check it out. Uh -huh. Why? Why do you need to check out strange death noises in a dark alley? You know you're in rival gang turf, and yet you have to check out some ominous noises far away. You guys are morons! Yeah, big shock, they get captured by the rival gang, because stupid, where the Witch King confronts them. Alone, in a wide open space, with numerous ways for the guys to get out and escape. So, pop quiz time, Wolfpack! Now these two perfectly able-bodied brothers, armed with weapons, are confronted by this petite woman barely blocking their path. So, what are they going to do? Will they A. Run around her B. Bum rush her and escape C. Kill her and jack her car Or D. Stand there and do nothing while she monologues Look, we didn't see anything, okay? That sounds good. But the thing is, I know who your dad was. So that means I know who you are. And your promises, they don't mean a thing to me. Uh -huh. Dang it, Crypt TV. I thought you were above idiot moments in horror stories. Ugh. So basically, the bros sit there like dolts while King gloats how fear is stronger than love because she evil. But the angry brother Jamie rather needlessly sacrifices himself to save innocent Vic once the dread demon is unleashed. Making it the first time we see the demon, dubbed Dread fully on screen. And boy howdy does the demon look wicked. He looks kind of like a Zindi reptilian from Star Trek Enterprise. Real epic design work. And as you can guess, Dread lives up to his title when he slays. Cross the Dread. Flee the Red.
Jamie! No! No kid, no witnesses. Understood? Got it. Yeah. Wait, you don't want any witnesses? Why? You're a gang. You're trying to strike terror on the streets to show how you're badass and no one should screw with you. Yet you don't want any witnesses telling people how scary you and your pet demon are? Huh? What's with this chick? The world may never know. So, the rest of this horror story is essentially a long Scooby-Doo chase scene, where our tragic buddy Vic desperately tries to hide from the demon gang as our bastard villains hunt him down. Scooby-Dooby-Doo, where are you? We got some work to do now. Scooby-Dooby-Doo, where are you? Okay, to Crypt TV's credit, I do love this chase scene. Since the suspense is pretty high volume, you do care about Vic, since he is the most innocent character in all this, and the monster is built up as a sick savage. As well as the bloodthirsty gang thugs are, so the fear factor is very much present. I think one of the best pros behind Crypt TV is their super dark buildup and solid anticipation for the scary stuff to happen, which this episode is fantastic at. Though I won't lie, they do dip into some dumb horror cliches at times. For example, this chase scene does rely on a few lame jump scares, some that don't even make sense. Like in this scene, Vic hides in a gross restroom where he's about to get cornered by one of the gang thugs with no way out. Where this happens. It's just me and you, boy. Come on now. Where? Oh! Where the heck was he hiding? If he wasn't in the stalls, then the thugs should have spotted him if he was in this large, empty, open room. Great continuity! But there is tons to love about this short, too. The best part is that Vic levels up from scared little kid to badass action survivor in this misadventure. He's forced to fight for his life, and to my astonishment, Vic gets some very awesome scenes. Fatality. Okay, that was cool. Now I hope Vic lives. I also enjoy how Crypt TV isn't just relying on the monster to provide all the horror. There's a few moments where they highlight the terrifying reality of gang violence and bullying. This is real helpful in telling the story, over whether or not Vic will be broken by this trauma, or stay strong by sticking to his faith and good when challenged. Really deep stuff for a short movie. Speaking of the high ground, Vic hides from the gang again, where he discovers that the Demon Dread is also mistreated by his own crew. We find out that Dread is really an innocent creature who hates killing, but the Lady King is forcing him to do her bidding since she controls him through her magic necklace, meaning that he has to obey her because it also protects her from him. King is stringing him along since the necklace also keeps Dread alive and in our world, so he can't risk offing her without the talisman getting damaged. It's kind of like the demon Cavaxis from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. 
He is eternally bound to the sacred talisman and has to obey whomever wields it, but it doesn't mean he has to like playing servant. Just another day of the Elder Gods making bullcrap rules as always. And as you can guess, our hero Vic has a chance at victory if he can separate King from her jewelry. Yep, the monster is innocent, and he's being pushed around by his jerk boss too. See, it's a metaphor. The monster and Vic are both poor nice guys who just want respect, being oppressed by a warmongering bully, using fear to keep them enslaved. <laughs> and I can give credit. The short does a decent job at balancing out Dredd's scariness and offering some genuine tragedy for him. Don't forget what I can do to you. Go find that kid! Don't make me awkwardly wave my stick again. This still doesn't stop the Halloween chase scene from ensuing, where it has some more scary moments until the show finally needs it to end. Alright, I think I'm safe. <laughs> Gee, who didn't see that one coming? Before the final strike, Vic makes a deal with the Monster Man. He tells Dredd that he can free him, that he can help him take down the Queen Bee Witch for good, and get him back his own talisman, where he'll never be a slave again. And if you can believe it or not, the monster actually listens. Yep, he agrees to spare our boy Vic since he promises him his freedom, earning the demon's respect. Hmm, I'm intrigued! <laughs> yes, the demon and our hero seriously team up because Dread is all good now. You always win when you are good. And the ghoul helps by slaughtering all the remaining extras. Good night, what? Betrayal. They lure King into an obvious trap, since she never questions how Vic killed her thug with a one punch, nor why Dread didn't off him yet, but her overconfidence is her weakness. Because once more, instead of killing him, she starts monologuing. <sighs> she gloats how fear is better than the magic of friendship because it's why she has the power and all that. But Vic at last shuts her up by conning her butt, and Dredd gets the most satisfying kill all webisode. What? You gonna kill two of my men? And you ain't got nothing to say? Speak, boy. Speak! So what happens when they stop feeding you? Medicine, huh? Cross the dreads and bleed the red. Savage as fuck. You know, Crypt TV, in spite of your forced idiot moments, that was pretty cool. Kudos. So yay, the day is saved, and the ghetto no longer has magic problems. Vic keeps his word and sets Dread free, literally leaving his life in his own hands now. Where the episode actually has the duo giving each other respect. It's so dumb, but I love it. I just think it's so funny, yet somehow awesome, that the demon seriously gives the hero a look of respect and becomes buddies. 
It's just amusing. And the tale ends with the monster running off into the night, while Vic goes off to find himself in his new fresh start, at last giving respect to the one person who mattered the most, himself. Wow. Goosebumps, man. I got him. All the R.L. Stein books. So, uh, why didn't Vic ever bury his dead brother's corpse? No data available. And that was the end to the surreal Crypt TV short, Dread. How does it hold up? Well, I'd say it's pretty dang respectable. As always, Crypt TV's production values are through the roof. This is another competently made horror film that does feel a thousand times better than most modern horror stories are. The effects are good, the violence feels brutal, the set looks gritty, the tone feels real, the main character is likable enough to root for, the demon is terrific, and the lesson is pretty effective. This is clearly a cautionary tale teaching people the power of fear versus the power of respect. With fear, you have nothing but betrayals and hatred coming your way, since some people don't back down to threats. But with respect comes trust and friendship. Things that people do need more of in life, since ultimately they pay off for Vic and save the day. The episode also shines a light on the gang violence ruining lives, and reveals that gangs are nothing more than idiot bullies who can be stopped when stood up to. Which I do like, since most of these crime dramas simply play it safe and say don't join a gang and leave it there. But Crypt TV had the hero end a gang in self-defense. We see that he didn't decide to kill them to avenge his dead brother, or even his long-dead father, but he fought them to free the monster. A creature who was just another victim of some oppressor, not out of personal vengeance. I kind of admire that twist, since it makes it feel more impactful than a generic revenge story. Sadly, there is one thing I did not like in this webisode. The idiot moments. I said it before, but I'll say it again. I am so sick and tired of idiot decision making in horror stories. It especially pisses me off here, since I know Crypt TV is smart and could have easily written around them. I know this is a short film, and we have to get the plot rolling, but idiot moments just cheapen the experience, because they exist to force out scary moments, rather than giving us something more creative. Sorry, Crypt TV, I love ya, but you could've done better. That being said, I still think this short is great overall. There were clever writing tactics here, the main protagonist and the monster are epic, the effects are good, the makeup is sweet, and the lesson is supremely solid. Overall, this is a journey worthy of great appreciation. So, I grant this webisode a gold skull. Sadly, no perfect score because idiots. However, I definitely recommend seeing this one, since it leans more on the best of Crypt TV spectrum. It's just so fun, emotional, and exciting to sit through, with a new spin on horror material that, in my eyes, succeeds at nice experimenting. While Crypt TV going to the hood might sound eye-rolling, it excellently shows that there's still a lot to dread. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, or just tune in for more videos posted here on Wolf Entertainment. I'm your host, Catastrophe, and I think we should end this showcase with the best rapper ever. <gasps> you mean? Yep, let her rip. I like pig butts and I cannot lie. I love them till when pigs fly. When a sound walks in with an itty bitty sound and a round thing sticking out, you got a tongue. You can't get enough when you notice those chucks are stuffed. 
deep in my dress, I'm so sure. It's probably not kosher. Oh, piggy, you know he ain't bacon. I want to bring home the bacon. My muffet's trying to stop me. But watch out, Kermit. Schnell's karate. <laughs> oh, little pig, let me in. You said you want to go to your pen? Well, excite me, delight me. Because you are the other white me. I've heard her singing. And my ears are still ringing. I see. She's got to go on like a big Harley. I'm tired of magazines. Say pigs are so unclean. Take the average pig and then look at Rizzle that nasty rat. So, frogs, frogs, with a girlfriend all real hot. Get her you know, shaking, shaking, shake that back bacon. Piggy got back. Yes, Piggy got back. The 1 900 crooks a lot. Cause frogs know how to hip hop. Piggy got back. Get it? Frogs, hip hop. Yeah, whatever. Miss Piggy got back. Yo, too legit. Too legit, Ribbit. Too legit. Too legit, Ribbit. Yo, 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 this is Kermit the Frog, but you can call me Sir Crooks a lot. And we'll see you next time on the Muppet Show. Yo. Wow, another great cat episode. I can't wait to talk to Pinky about it once she gets back to us. Gets back? Gets back? You think she's going to come back to help us? Don't make me laugh. Pinky is obviously done working with us. What do you mean? Pinky's our friend. She'll come around eventually. Oh, wake the hell up, scaredy cat. She doesn't like you. Pinky is not really your friend. She's besties with the new cat now. He's the center of her universe, after all. Huh? But Pinky loves us. She used to love us. With that new cat sitting at the table, she's done everything to win over his partnership and tossed us aside. We're yesterday's new scaredy cat. She loves the new kitty cat catastrophe now. We're not her favorites anymore. No! No, that can't be! Pinky's just showing him around. She's helping him get adjusted here. And then they can both work with us like we always do. Maybe she'll come back to us once Cat is fully trusted. Or she's moved on. She's spending all her time with the new Cat and not you, scary Cat. Face it, Pinky loves the new Cat more. She doesn't... Respect you like I do. Pinky Dye doesn't respect me? Well, do you see her here now? She's interested in her new cat toy. Start seeing it that way. She doesn't appreciate your greatness like I do. I see so much more to you and your genius. She made a mistake trading you up. Maybe if you were to commit to my friendship full-time, I can help you win back your lost respect from dear old Pinky. Think about it, Scary. Sooner or later, your old best friend will leave you behind because she respects another more than you. But maybe we can fix that. I... I... We'll keep in touch. I won't force you to decide now, since unlike Pinky, I make time for my friends. But I may require your talents in the future. You know why? Because I respect your abilities. Pinky doesn't respect me?